Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with the Everyday Hero brand new stamp set from Ellen Hudson. Really cute stamp set. I think you're gonna be excited about it because look at her, she's a superhero. She's the one on the left and she's got great sentiments that you can add onto her t-shirt and stuff. And I had a specific idea for this. I will have another picture from the other stamp set, the Hot Mess Lady using a similar technique. I'm not going to show you how to do it, but I'll show you the card at the end, but she's got lots of hot mess type sentiments. And I love the one that says you're flossom because <laughs> you're awesome, but you're full of flaws. And that's the way we all are, aren't we? So to set this one up for the idea that I had, I've already cut my mask of the, the lady, my everyday hero. And I also cut a business card size piece of cardstock here because I wanna make a card that's gonna insert into the front of the card, but I need it to match up. I want the stamping on the card to match the stamping on the background. And I know that's complex to explain right now, but I want you to know that that's my plan. So I've got it secured down with magnets here, and I'm gonna use my Misty to set up my stamp so that it's in the right place. And then I'm gonna pop it in here and stamp right across the little card as well as the background and then pull it up carefully. I don't want to move anything, remove the card and then stamp the rest of the woman. So that now I have two pieces that should match. I wanted to do some airbrushing. Lots of you guys have been asking me to do more airbrushing and this is a kind of simple way to do some airbrushing that has some pow to it, but doesn't really take a whole lot of, I guess, detailed masking and stuff. You just need that one mask for the lady, which we already used anyway. And then I picked a spot in the center. I wanted my, my rays to go out from her and I'm drawing pencil lines, just radiating out, not measuring them. I'm just using my ruler to kind of make them roughly line up with that center spot on her. Go all the way down the different directions and then I'm gonna line up the card in the same spot and continue those lines so that the lines on the card are the same as the lines on the background of the card or the, the little card <laughs> line up with the background on the main card those two pieces. And then I'm gonna be ready to start my airbrushing. Now the idea for this is I'm gonna have the little card be a gift card for doing something for someone. And the t-shirt here in this case says, here to help. And there's a lady in my church that inspired this. I see her all the time she was not there. Her husband was there and I talked to him and he said she's been really sick for weeks. And I just thought I would love to have a card like this to give to somebody like her to say, I'm here to help, what can I do? And then on the little card, I'm gonna tell her what I'm offering, how I'm offering to help her. So there we have our little mask. And what I did to cover up those areas where I, I cut in the mask in order to do her little parts inside her elbows was to just put a little piece of, paper, little piece of tape over top of it so that nothing slips through there. That's the only reason for that little crazy thing. And this is Eclipse Tape. Eclipse Tape comes in large pieces, which is what I used to cut the mask for the whole figure. And then these smaller tape rolls. And I'm taping down some scratch paper on the outside because I wanted to make sure I didn't get any spillover on my airbrush. And now I'll pop my marker, my Copic marker, into my airbrush. And it's hooked up to my uh, compressor down below my desk. And then just press the button and it starts to spray. Now, if you're somebody who has struggles like me and trying to get it somewhat even, this is actually not too hard of a thing to do because you've got a little area, you don't have to focus on a huge area, and we're gonna have a way in the next step to recover from that if you still make mistakes. So I'm really big on figuring out how to cover mistakes because I'm not really great with the airbrush. But I have been getting back into it lately. I took a long break from it and got into other things and lately I've just, gotten it out once in a while. So I'm just doing every other one with this yellow. Now you can do every other one with another color as well, but we're gonna do it the easy way as soon as I get all this done because I wanna do it the easy way. I don't wanna do it hard. I don't wanna make it difficult. Because you can choose if you would like to have the, um, the other stripes be airbrushed with a different yellow. But guess what? I'm just going to leave my mask there and I'm going to airbrush right over the whole thing with the same marker, just doing a lighter coat of the color. And then I'm going to get the effect of having two different yellows without having to stress about it. 
and it also is going to cover any areas where my masking maybe didn't stay in place really well or something and I can just cover it all up with yellow and then I have a yellow card because you know me and yellow we we go well together so next I need to do the same thing on my little card and I made sure before I did this to check and make sure I'm going to get the right stripes in the darker yellow and the right stripes in the lighter yellow. Make sure you do take note of that. And this time, instead of taking big pieces of paper to tape down, I'm just going to use an extra little piece of the Eclipse tape and then just airbrush my little sections. And this one will be smaller. And my original plan for this one is to make this one darker than the card the card base, the background one. I changed my mind later, but for now, <laughs> we're going to leave this as is, um, trying to make the whole thing just a little bit darker overall than the other, the other one, because I wanted to make sure it stood out. Because if I'm going to give this to an elderly lady at church, it might help if she knew that this was a thing that is going to pop out of here. So now I'm going to zoom really fast through the coloring because there's lots of coloring videos here on YouTube if you want to check any of those out. But I'll give you the colors on the screen as always. And I will talk through a little bit of it. One is that I picked this co color combination, but remember when you're coloring anything with your Copic markers that when you put the color down at first, the ink is wet. And the ink wets the paper and the, therefore the paper goes a little bit on the gray side. It's going to take a minute for that to settle in. So if you're having trouble with your blending, wait till later and go back and try to do some more coloring over top of it. I actually darkened my colors later because her skin wasn't dark enough compared to the other colors because I chose some really intense colors here for the red hair because this lady's always, or actually her husband is always commenting on my red hair. So I thought I would do that for him, uh, for his sake, so he would see that. So. Uh, I want to offer to the both of them that I want to come over and clean their house or do some chores or something for them because if she's sick, then she's not able to do all the stuff that she normally does to take care of him. So now I'm going to do the, the cape. And of course, she's got to have a red cape if she's a superhero. She's an everyday superhero, though, so she's going to have some other things that are going to make her less superhero-ish and more everyday-ish. But she's got to have the red cape. Because even if you're an everyday hero and you're wearing your sweats, you could still handle wearing a red cape. So I'm going to use a couple of my favorite dark red colors in order to color this in. But my R89 is just my best friend when it comes to coloring anything red. Because it gives me this nice, really rich, dark, dark, dark red. And then the mid-tone color that I use, my R37, blends super nice with it. And I'm leaving just a few tips on some of those folds of the fabric on the cape, letting them pop forward so that I get that dimension. And then go back in with my light red and just go over top of all that and make sure it's all blended really nicely. This is where I decided I wanted her to have darker skin because now that we've got all this rich color in the both the cape and in the hair, I needed to add more dark color. So sometimes that's just because of the fact that it uh, it dried back and sometimes it's because of in combination with the other colors on the card you might need to add more contrast and so I'm just gonna be wearing in this picture I'm gonna be wearing my sweatshirt I'm just wearing a gray sweatshirt there's nothing exciting about a gray sweatshirt and a pair of jeans but I have a cape on so I'm here to help I'm gonna be a superhero in my sweatshirt <laughs> and yeah so that's how silly I decided to make this so I colored the little card as well, the same colors, and got it lined up the way that I want to have it on the front of the card. And I'm going to put slits to tuck this business card in. And if you've seen like folders that have business cards in them, I'm going to use the same kind of technology. Just figure out what angle you would put the slits at and mark them with a pencil, very simply on your background, and then use some kind of a knife. I have this fingertip knife that keeps me from cutting my finger off. And join those two little little dots that you made and you may need to make them a little bit extended from that if you're having trouble tucking it in depending on how how well that works but see they just tuck into there and then I can line her up and line my stripes up and it all works quite nicely together later on I did actually put the mask back on because I decided I wanted her to match the card better because 
I think I think my my friend is going to be able to figure out that she could pull this card off of the front of the card. And I thought I'd also shock you now by telling you this is not Y17, it's Y35 because my Y17 now has a bullet nib in the end instead of the chisel nib so I can't airbrush with it until I get a second Y17 marker. So I need to go do some shopping. Anyway, finished card. I used a couple different stamp sets for my sentiments. And I've got the whole thing popped up on a red card base with some dimensional adhesive. My card is tucked in and I made this extra card so I could write the name on it, Meredith, but that's not her name. I don't want her to know if she sees this video. But I put Just For You from the Make It Beautiful stamp set on the outside. And then on the inside, I put the Relax sentiment on the, the card itself. So she takes the card off, she still has that. And I put Good For One House Cleaning but you can put anything on there, whatever you're willing to do for your friend to be here to help. So I hope that you will offer to be a help to somebody else who needs it. Because sometimes we need to just offer it. We need to specifically say, I want to clean your toilets today. And then they're willing to say yes. Now I promised you another card with the other stamp set that just got released, the Hot Mess stamp set. And I did my airbrushing in the background with blue instead and made it kind of radiate out from the calendar instead of from her heart, but you can do it any old way you want. And there you go. So all of the links for everything are listed in the description down below, as well as over on the blog. If you want to go check that out and see what everybody else has created with these brand new stamp sets, because they're really fun. And that's about it for today. So I hope you have a great day. Go make something beautiful. Go offer to help somebody else today. All right. I'll talk to you later.